This is the sound being made by half of Venezuela every night. Government opponents, angry at the decision to reject their calls for a recount, bang their pots and pans in a noisy, defiant protest. And this is what most infuriated them. Earlier this week, despite the controversy raging over the disputed election result, the Electoral Council named Nicolas Maduro president-elect. He was swift to ban an opposition march and said his challenger, Enrique Capriles, was planning a coup d'etat. They have a plan. They're being financed by the State Department of the United States of America. They think their moment has come to destroy the fatherland of Simon Bolivar. In total, seven people were killed in post-election protests, and all week there has been a sense that the anger could again spill over into violence. The opposition argue that, given the closeness of the result, they simply want the ballot boxes opened. We want to know what happened on Sunday. If it turns out that Capriles won, well, they must recognize it. If Maduro won, we will recognize that. I've lost elections and Capriles too. We've always accepted defeat, but only when things are done properly. Meanwhile, the barricades are being put in place outside the National Assembly, ahead of Mr. Maduro's inauguration. All under the watchful eye of the revolution's supreme commander, Hugo Chavez. The opposition is still crying foul over the election, but the plain reality is that in here, the National Assembly building, Nicolas Maduro is about to be sworn in as the next president of Venezuela. And the challenge for him is trying to govern a country so clearly split into two opposing halves. Will Grant, BBC News, Caracas.